Gentlemen, we continue this conversation looking at this particular editorial cartoon that we have in the Daily Nation uh, where Munene has drawn for us what politicians are actually doing right now. They are on the stamp, right? We are getting up towards general election and this is the government aid. Look at that. What is being dropped as aid is uh, the ballot box, boxes, I should say, help is here. And we can see Unjiko there <laughs> with a hand in pail. There's a, there's a WhatsApp thing doing the rounds. Yes. Doctors are on strike. People are looking for votes. There is no water in this country, especially this city. Korea and this team are looking for votes. And so on, and you can go on and the famine and all that. And what politicians are doing is looking for votes. It's actually sad. In some countries, something more drastic would be done. Assuming this, really, this thing is real. Mm -hmm. But before we went for the break, I wanted to make a small point. Could we uh, just intervene? Because I think before we went to the break, it was actually Jacoy who was... Uh, I thought it was me. It was Jacoy. <laughs> it was Oh. <laughs> I thought, Deba, first of all, you're calling me the deputy majority leader. Minority leader, sorry. So sorry, the, no, sorry. No, I'm the majority. No, the next <laughs> government, you know, we, are, we will be in the majority. So the way this yeah. other one is failing, we are very happy. Uh -huh. But I was saying, just to complete what I was saying, this thing Moses Korea is call, calling long-term projects. Yes. I said... Um, all the projects being done by the Jubilee government mm -hmm. are opportunities to loot public funds. If you look at the case of uh, the, the Itere Dam in Kerecho, nobody knows exactly how much it would cost. People spoke about 34 billion but the paperwork says 37 billion. It means somebody is already eyeing 3 billion shillings in a project which will have long-term effects on our, in uh, uh, our environment. Look at the word in Muranga, where uh, when, uh, the, when Raila spoke about it, mm -hmm. there was a lot of noise from the politicians uh, the, uh, from Moses Kuria's end of the world. But the people told them no. The people of Moranga told them no. Say, so we may not like Raila, but he is right. Then they went silent. Look at this thing called SGR, not Strategic Grain Reserve, but the railway. Why are they giving us diesel locomotives? I saw on CNN the other day, it is this, it's assessed to be the most expensive project ever done in Africa, the, uh, this railway. Mm -hmm. But with diesel engines, what happened to the bullet trains? Why did you promise us, why did you promise one thing and you have not leveled with Kenyans why you have changed and you have increased the spending on it? Mm -hmm. Something, everything they are calling development is an opportunity to steal. You should ask yourself, why, where are the laptops? And the money has been spent. What happened to the, now, in fact, I saw the president the other day calling them gadgets. He's now not calling them laptops. <laughs> they are calling them gadgets. Because they are toys. Those are just Those semantics. Are, no, it's not semantics. <laughs> you know, a laptop is not a gadget. <laughs> you know, but the truth is, every investment done by this government is an opportunity. It's, it's a 360 All degrees right. difference from what, what happened during Kibaki and Raila. Okay, let's say from uh, Honorable uh, Bill Okero. Yeah, he says that uh, the government is not really leveling with Kenyans when it comes to also the locomotives. We have the diesel engines and yet also we've said on, on this program and before uh, on many occasions that why is the government also seeking 42 billion shillings to electrify uh, the SGR and you're importing diesel locomotives. Does it make any sense? No, I think in, in general, one thing about the uh, priorities of the government, I, I think that there is a valid point that some of the priorities that the government uh, has engaged in, uh, one could argue are misplaced. I, I want to give even in the current one, where if you look at today, one shipment of fertilizer that docked yesterday 
it's five point something billion shillings. Fertilizers to be supplied free or subsidized to, get to, to the farmers. The same government is struggling to raise five billion for the last two, three months to assist on emergency uh, food uh, to those people who are dying and starving. Um, one would have thought that it's, it's a priority to provide that five billion to the emergency, the people who are dying really, mm -hmm. than to assist farmers who, even after they have been subsidized, are not selling their maize to NCPB because of the price. Um, the, 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 same, the same kind of, um, uh, I, I think, um, uh, decisions had, had, had informed um, SGR. Mm -hmm. but, but, but the question on SGR, really, it, it's not more about the implementation, but the planning. Because I think the planning for SGR started years ago in the, in the Grand uh, Coalition. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the implementation, yes, but I think if you look at the fact that the whole concept was informed years before this, this government came into, into whatever, you, you, could, you could fault it at that level, that, that, that decision uh, to, to, to put up this kind of um, mm -hmm. um, a diesel engine really was not, was not appropriate. In the same way that I personally would have the same problem with, with, with the decision to put up Lamu, for example, and, and have another, instead of putting in all that money into, into Mombasa and probably uh, upgrading the infrastructure that, you know, the Northern Corridor all the way, which, which would, would make a lot of sense. But um, some of these things really, it, it's, it, the initial stages, I think when the Vision 2030 was done, when all these things were being planned, I think there isn't quite a bit of, um, um, it, it's not just about the money aspects. I think sometimes decisions have been informed by political considerations, the need to develop some regions also, uh, and, and so forth. But um, I agree that on the area of SGR, um, perhaps we should have gone for something that is more uh, more modern. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Moses Kure, then we'll come to... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> listening to my group, Eli Jacom, we do. I, I think I have personally given up on <laughs> our friends from CORD ever seeing anything <laughs> good, in, not just in the Jubilee government, but in the world. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> SDR, eh, has a problem. Tarmac. Everything, laptop is too small. What well, this gadget should have a big one. Yeah. You know, Italy is bad, Moranga is bad. And you know what happened? You know, this guy say that most of these projects were mooted during the Grand Coalition government. And, and it's true to some extent. But the problem is when we dig deep within these projects, we find that Raila had put some opportunity for corruption thinking he's going to be president. So he put it in Moranga, yeah. he put it in Italy, he put it in SGR. Now, when he did not become president, he imagined, oh, I put some corruption money there and it's going to go somebody else. Then he goes crazy. You don't think we don't know these things. That is why. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, wait a minute. You kill these projects are Raira's project. That is why he goes basak. He goes bonkers. Yeah, about this project. Knowing that project had put some two billion. There's no way I can get that project. That one had put three billion. It was very crafty engineering of corruption by, by, by the prince of corruption, Laila Odinga. But do we have any scrap of proof towards that? Oh, that is why, if you want proof for this. These guys, even Moranga, never came to parliament. This Italian never came to parliament. This is a deputy leader of minority. Ask yourself, whenever did you find parliament, an issue in parliament, to, to, to interrogate these things where we can now, instead of arguing on TV, look at documents, you know, you know, ask questions and more questions, ask for proof and more proof. If you find that people who are in parliament, people who are in committees, always rushing to funerals and public podiums to criticize these projects, are they, who they have not brought to parliament, yeah? Then ask yourself whether really it's about politicking or it's about reality. All right, thank you. Yeah, because even now, and you know, with all due respect to my good friend Senator Bello, you ask him about uh, accountability, and he said that the dead people should see your government. There is no way dead people can see your government. What we need to do is, uh, in this uh, recess, we should have someone, any member, should have petitioned the speaker. Let's go back to parliament or even to committee and discuss the issue of drought and dying Kenyans. If we now stand here on national television and pretend to care very much for Kenyans, but he's not and saying I'm the dead should sue the government. I, I have some privilege which Manuela does not have. As a member of parliament, I could have petitioned the speaker of both houses, let's come back and discuss the issue of drought as an urgent issue of national importance. But because we want to politic using this issue, because we don't want to get to the bottom of the matter of this issue, we are happy to come and say, oh, 
two have died. It's not even two Kenyans, it's two, because it's just a statistic for political purposes. But this should uh, not be even the discussion for, for this particular show, uh, as we should not be talking about drought in, in this country at all. Uh, absolutely, yes. I, I do agree with you. And the right place to start from before we came here, we should have come yesterday from a special sitting of parliament as a representative of the people to discuss the drought, if we mean what we say, it, it, and we say what we mean. All right, all right. Can, can we hear, let's there hear from Prof. come to you. I agree with Jacob Medio. There's a common denominator running through all these projects that they are meant for people to eat and fatten themselves as if they will be slaughtered for the butcheries. That's the common denominator. Ever wondered why when teachers wanted 37 billion, it looked like they wanted 370 billion. 51 days, the doctors are on strike. Kenyans are suffering. We talk of five people dying of famine. How many people have died because doctors are on strike? How many families have sold their only property, even land, to take their loved ones for care because government hospitals are not fine? Yet, do you know how much money the doctors are demanding? Eight billion shillings. In a country where people pump billions in useless projects, why would it be so difficult to pay doctors? Just 8 billion extra in a year. You know why? When you commit 8 billion into people's salaries, mm -hmm. that's not something you'll eat. If you had 8 billion as a government, as Jubilee was the Korea here, if you gave it to doctors, then nobody will eat it because it will go to the doctor's bank account. But if you put it in a project, 8 billion, the project is worth perhaps 1.6 billion, the rest is for people to eat. And, and this is what I'm saying. We must begin to love our country. Even Kidogo too. Let's just have some little love for this country. Because if we continue the way we are continuing, look, lecturers are now on strike. Nobody seems to care. All right. Uh, you know? Okay. It's let's, really bad. All right. Uh, Dan Mushiri is asking you, please ask video when and who promised bullet train? <laughs> when? And, and who promised the bullet train oh. you, you, you mentioned? Good, good question. The... It was the Kibaki Raila government that promised us uh, 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 that infrastructure. When Jubilee government took power, the first thing they did, they doubled the cost of it. The construction began. There is no electricity lines, I'm sure you may know. Now they are asking for 42 billion to build, if you want to do a bullet train, it's an electric train. The mm. first thing you build is an electric, an electric line. That was in the original plan. Mm -hmm. Now they have gone and gotten used locomotives, diesel locomotives. Not, they are not even new. But if it was in the original plan, why would they seek 42 billion uh, shillings? Because, the, yeah, because to, to electrify. Because it. when the when it will be found out or investigated, you'll find that the Jubilee government saw an opportunity to make money. That's why, without coming to parliament, they doubled the cost of this thing. Mm -hmm. And last week, remember, Pro uh, Professor Manora said it very nicely. He said how the thing was conceived and how it has been looted, because it was designed to be looted. Somebody saw an opportunity. And coming back to Moses Korea, you know why he calls um, uh, Raila the Lord of Corruption? You know, who was the Minister of Finance when all these things happened? It is the current president, and that is the truth. Who was his boss? His boss was Kibaki. <laughs> it was, it was, his boss was Kibaki. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, but you see, even, let, me, let, me, let me just further one thing, uh, okay. uh, Senator. Yeah. Just one, just one yeah. more minute. Professor Manyora has said, talked about the doctor strike. What happened to the president being the chair of the organization of governors? It's in the constitution. Why hasn't he called these people? Instead of assuming that uh, health is a devolved function, it is only a devolved function when the government is called to action. But otherwise, they allocate themselves money for the leasing of medical equipment. Then they allocate themselves money for theft in those containers. 
And all doctors are asking is actually peanuts. All right, let, let's hear from yeah. as we bring to a close the, the, the issue of corruption and drought, we move on to other also stories nah, as well. Yeah, I just want to com a brief comment on this. Um, you know, with all due respect to, to, to really the people of Kenya, I, I think parliament is complicit in all these things. You, you cannot really blame government for what, what is happening in SGR or any of these things. Not less than two parliamentary committees in the National Assembly investigated the whole thing about SDR. I mean, it's in public domain. And in every project, whether it's a billion shillings or a hundred billion, I think it all goes and the funds are approved, the projects are approved, and committees spend a lot of time in this new political dispensation. Our committees are meeting literally daily to look at what the government is doing. So, and, and these committees are made up of both sides of the house. Uh, so, so to some extent, really, um, you cannot simply say the government is just having its cake and eating. I think that there is, there is parliament charged with oversight that has that had a role and that is not executing its role effectively. I think that let's put it that is that the watchdog and we are not doing our work. I think that let's let's put it that. that the second thing I wanted to um, uh, point out really is that um, I, I think blaming um, each other is not really the, the issue. I, I think if we know. Uh, as, as, as leaders, what needs to be done? I think we have an obligation, we have a responsibility, and we have an opportunity to influence uh, policy. We have an opportunity to influence decision making in government. I, I think this is where it should be in both sides of the of the divide, rather than really to to accuse to accuse um, each other. And, and I think it's, it's time we moved on. Um, really, even even the one with the most, you know, um, absurd idea, like what's happening in the U.S. with the Trump and so forth. Um, people are given opportunities and, 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 and really the reason is because there are institutions that are there to provide checks and balances and I, I think if the institutions are working then we will not end up with the kind of situations that we, we you know we complain about all the time I, I think it's, it's just that every Kenyan you give an opportunity to run an institution each of us is looking at our own and, and, and probably failing in ensuring that um, uh, we, 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 we deliver as, as required on our mandates. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Scully, as we are winding up on this, yes. Really, and I really want to support what you were saying about the blame game. The biggest problem we have in this country is that you are, the corruption index changes as you move from one side of political divide to the other. You remember when Charlie Tingiri was taken to court, and the entire court brigade was there, <laughs> talking about, you know, Wakaba uh, Durumiwa, this government is against Kambas. The now, now I had now on some, some court guys on social media now start to say Mother Karua is this and that. Only the other day she was a darling on the other side. So I think in America they have got something good whereby they say on matters of national security, there is no Republican and there is no Democrat. I think on matters of corruption, the main reason will say there is no court or jubilee on matters of corruption. We all agree when the president does something on corruption, mm -hmm. I would want the leader of opposition to start saying that's very good. He has done it right. But Always wanting to see corruption in, 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 in political lenses is why we have got a very long way to go in, 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 in fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. All right, and still on the beat of corruption, we know now former Anglican Archbishop Eludu Abukala has officially begun his six-year term as the chairman of the controversy, controversy, I should say, Riddle Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Abukala took oath of office yesterday before the Chief Justice and the Attorney General Obukala becomes the third EACC chairman to take up the job after his predecessor was unceremoniously bundled out of office following claims of impropriety. While he has his job cut out as the chairman, the days ahead will put to test all the abilities and capabilities of the men of God. And that is what also that has been clearly captured also uh, inside the dailies today by also Stano. This is the editorial cartoon also in the star as we may see it today. Looking at that, this is a camel which is actually being taken by Wabukala and we have the eye of a needle there. Will it pass? Will Wabukala pull out that magical wand and make sure that we stanch the flow of corruption in this country. First, he promised that he will do away with the secretariat. Is, well, that, is, is that actually the first step that he should take? Uh, do away and, with the secretariat? And if he doesn't, he will fail before Christmas. If 
he doesn't kick out the secretariat. But I can tell you by now, they have probably manufactured a dossier on him, which they will dangle uh, on his face to toe the line. Remember I said here before that there is no way we will fight corruption with this secretariat. This is, uh, these are people making money. Uh, these are political people who have refused to imagine independence. And, and uh, really, the, the, the Wabukala should come with his own, uh, his own team that he can control. But if he thinks he can pray over it, he won't succeed. Uh, but let, 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 let me also say that the experience we have gone through as a country, I think ESCC is something we may begin to think of doing away with. I think corruption should be on all, the fight against should be everybody fighting it, not uh, to create this opportunity for a few people just to, uh, to make money. So you think if he prays over it, it won't move any needle like George? Never. He will, he Are you not. trying to, to tell God, us that? God uh, only yeah. helps those who help themselves. <laughs> which philosophy is there and from which Bible do you read that from? Or the Quran? Uh, no, I know when you pray, and I pray a lot, uh, and you desire, and you make an effort, God will always be on your side. But if you just sit and pray, <laughs> Nothing happened. All right. Uh, Bill Okero, do you think he's starting off from, uh, you know, wrong footing when he says that, yeah, we should do, first of all, I will do away with the secretariat. Now he's also creating a frosty relationship with, you know, the commission and the secretariat, mm -hmm. as it is right uh, now. No, I, I this think... this has been on uh, for ages, with, even with the previous chairs. No, I, I, in my view, he hasn't. Um, I, I think it's wrong. I think this is one institution. I've been there before, by the way. I was in the board um, when uh, PLO was the was the was the the director um so the commission needs the secretariat there, there is no doubt i mean the work has to be done by the secretariat and and, and um if, if you don't if there's no goodwill you don't have confidence in the secretariat then clearly you will not be you, you'll face an uphill task but but i think it's not just about the secretariat i, I think the challenge that he's going to face it, it's not just, it, it's both the criminal justice system that we have, oh. this is the entire uh, prosecution and, and judiciary, and parliament. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. uh, two things that I think he needs to uh, look at is the provisions of Article 249 on the funding, uh, to, uh, so that they have the, the resources and the funds, really, that's critical. Um, and second, he needs the goodwill from parliament, without, without, without which he will not be able to succeed, even if he had a new team uh, a new secretariat, he will not succeed. Um, really, at the end of the day, in, in my view, really, that is what, that's why we, PLO was, and, and our team was sent away. Because, you know, every time the hit gets closer up to the, uh, to the powers, then uh, parliament would simply uh, be used to uh, um, uh, put out the lights, in the, and, and, and I think, and change the law and so forth. So I, I, I think what, what he needs to do, if I were, him is to spend quite a bit of time with, a, with, with the president and deputy. He needs that commitment at that level, really. If he gets commitment fully to be able to do whatever he wants, then he needs to also get the parliament on board. If these institutions are working with him, the executive and parliament, he will succeed. Uh, so it's not just about the secretariat, really. Uh, I think he would be missing the board. It's not about the secretariat alone. Uh, but we've known uh, Wabukala has been also the chair of the national uh, uh, count the national steering, steering uh, campaign uh, anti-corruption steering campaign what what has he done so effectively that actually now he can be the chair of ESCC with that particular campaign uh, do even Kenyans know about the national uh, anti-corruption steering I campaign agree with senator Bill O'Keefe that he needs to start with the parliament or Bukala would need to start with the parliament by putting the guys in jail you know these MPs are stealing our money left right false mileage and all kind of things which PLO just attempted to touch and he was home before you could say PL. <laughs> you couldn't even get to O. He needs to start by putting this MP in jail. However, he will not do that and the reasons are not even difficult to see. If you look at the genesis of this anti-corruption body, the first one uh, it was put up to Harun Mao or something like that. Uh, who said it? Mao, yeah. Mao, yeah. The boss. We were doing so bad internationally 
and we were being denied aid, we needed to show the world that we were going to fight corruption. This is the genesis of this corruption body. The bar. Mm -hmm. Countries that fight corruption do not need such a body. They just fight corruption. Number two, having an anti-corruption agency like ESEC presupposes there is corruption. There is no corruption in this country. Mm -hmm. There's no corruption in this country. Okay. What we have in this country is cheap theft. It's just theft. Cheap the theft. police, yeah, it's just theft. It's not corruption. Corruption involves some high-level thinking and planning and strategizing and scheming. This is petty theft, what? crude theft, and the police have enough within their institution to arrest these thieves. We have courts, existing laws can be used. We have enough jails. What you need is to remove petty thieves from, petty offenders from committee and the rest of these places. We have enough laws to deal with thieves. When Kenyans begin to engage in corruption, as indeed at some point they will, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we will need anti-corruption laws and anti-corruption bodies maybe. But for now, let's arrest the thieves, let's take them to court, let's send them to committee. I've said that many times. They do it so cheaply that a first year law student can prosecute them and put them in jail. They steal so poorly, so shamelessly, in such a huge amounts of money that a police constable who has not even done prosecu prosecution can prosecute the case effectively and lock these guys in jail. So I don't think we need anything like and right. corruption. Okay. Could we take a uh, call? Uh, I'll start here. Uh, could, we, could, of... we, could we take callers and we come to you if you don't mind? Yeah. We have callers hanging on the line, right? <laughs> yeah. Let, let's uh, hear from uh, Victor. I'm lucky now. This Victor. Cool. <laughs> Good morning, Victor. <laughs> morning to you. You have a question or a contribution for our viewers? Yeah, well, uh, for our panelists? Yes. You, you know what else this country? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go on. What else this country is Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the rain started beating up when uh, when uh, the side of the side of uh, Moses Korea when they were found eating when, when they were found stealing public funds they started saying that the other side are also stealing. So this country when a thief is caught, the thief will start naming another thief on the other street. All right, I'm afraid we have to drop that caller because. Uh the reception is a bit uh, not very clear. We have Francis hanging on the line. Good morning, Francis. Morning. Morning to you. Have a question or contribution, sir? A contribution to you, sir. All right, briefly. Yeah, I'm asking Mr. Moses Kuria. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. Moses. I'm asking Mr. Moses Kuria whether uh, the Antony General in Kenya is living in Kenya or abroad. Because we are so very active at the ICC, but when it comes to Kenya, mm -hmm. there is nobody writing the precedent on illegal matters. And I don't know whether uh, the Wabukara can make anything as far as corruption is concerned in Kenya. As long as the other person, Iraqi Wako, Moveya, mm -hmm. they are still in that office. Kenya is not going anywhere. I don't sit, and I'm a Kenyan, I'm here to stay as you are saying. I don't know my time, but it exactly means as long as the two are in that office, mm -hmm. they will never take Kenya anywhere. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's hear from our last caller hanging on the line as well. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Kenya. Good, mo good morning, Dibal. Yes, you have a question or a contribution for our panelists? I have a contribution. Briefly, sir. First of all, Mr. Kuri, I think you should see a psychiatrist. You should do what? You should see a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. Second of all, let me say. Switch off that call. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, that okay call. just a, uh, a responsible journalist. Uh, yes, yes, just a moment. Uh, Switch off that call. <laughs> just a moment, yeah. yeah. You yes, uh, yeah, 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 just a moment. Okay, let us all, let, let me prove why I miss a card. No, 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 no. Switch off that call. Okay, Switch okay. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. All right, okay, for the sake of this debate, let me drop this call first of all. Uh, that, that is an insult, and of yeah, course, Kenya, we cannot go on with that no, particular that's that's uh, call. That's not, that's not All right, right. But we can respond to Kenya, and we can respond yeah. also. Okay. Yeah, let, let me talk about the issue of uh, 
first of all, Abukar. You know, you know, I was the first one to say that uh, Abukar should be the chairman of uh, IBC. <laughs> I think I was vilified for it. He has ended up becoming chairman of, uh, <laughs> of anti-corruption. And the reason I was saying that maybe Jacob Mido may never know is because uh, Mr. Laira Oding, I was fearing he would oppose anyone to become chairman. So I thought because uh, he is an agrican that maybe by giving him Abukala he is going to accept. And it seems it has worked, you know, on the issue of uh, anti-corruption. But uh, then I agree again with Jacob Mido, and I said it during the IABC committee. Uh, when when uh, the select committee on IABC, when EACC came to us, and I said it's on Hansard, that I think it's time to disband EACC. Mm -hmm. And it's time to see corruption as a normal crime in the penal code like any other. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow if you have got sexual offenses, sexual offenses court. Mm -hmm. Corruption, anti-corruption court or anti-corruption commission. Can't we just believe in institutions the way they, they are and we strengthen them? So the police to be strengthened, the office of the Auditor General to be strengthened, uh, the office of uh, you know, the judiciary to be strengthened. I totally agree with you on that basis. Mm -hmm. I also agree with Bill Okello that you, know, you cannot do without a secretary at Shuel. And looking at issues as just a secretary, the issue is just missing the point. Mm -hmm. But I totally disagree with Manola here on the issue of just saying that the MP should be put in jail. <laughs> by the way, all these are graduates. You are taught by lecturers. If you are thieves, you are the master thief. <laughs> 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 you are the master You even sit exams on behalf of your students. <laughs> Switch off these two. Switch off. <laughs> Switch off, man. Switch it off now. <laughs> Let's hear from Bill Okero. Let me, let me, let me clarify <laughs> one point. I, I think the reason why we have these institutions, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commissions in many countries, is there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a charter of the UN, there's a provision uh, in, in terms of fighting corruption, in terms of anti-terrorism. There, no, there are some kinds of uh, crimes for which there are international uh, uh, agreements um, from the UN and so forth, where you have to put those institutions in place. So, in fact, if you look at the structure, uh, if you look at the law, these are all modeled on those on those on those provisions. And yeah. the reasons are because some of these things are uh, cross border; they they, they affect many uh, countries, and, and and so this kind of um, is not is not something that you can just leave to the penal court. And I think that's the reason why we have them in place. And I think, in my view, I, I think to allow corruption to be a petty offense to be handed by through the penal court would would really make the matter worse um, if you can't stop it at this level uh, allowing it to be done by police i think would not make it any well but well i disagree with that position mm -hmm. you know first of all uh, uh, professor manyora but now, do i really belong in prison that, that I wanted to say <laughs> that, uh, you know, to be fair to Moses Kuria, many Kenyans think he, he, he is crazy. So Kenya may, may be in the many Kenyans. But Kuria is a highly, a highly intelligent guy. I'm defending you. I'm defending you. Can we just stop it? Let, let's move on to the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, but we, we need to let callers, you know, we need not to be too harsh on them. Yeah. So let, let them let the people participate. We correct them, but we don't be harsh on our viewers. But so, so then, I, what I, what I Honorable Bill has said? You are one of them. No, 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 no. I, I was we, defending we, you. We, I've we, said we, you are a very intelligent person. I said you are a very intelligent. Fantastic. Person. I think we have passed that junction. <laughs> let, let's move on. I, I was disagreeing with uh, the senator because you know anti-corruption. The the investigators are all from the police force. They are just glorified. They move from this corrupt police force to the EACC. It's better pay now. What we need to do is to create a division that fights that kind of crime within the police force. Mm. The next thing I want to say is that the DPP, the, DP, the current DPP, not even his office, something is amiss. You know, remember a few months ago, there were, they, we were told that there were seven files handed to him mm -hmm. about seven governors. Yes. What has he done? I can tell you what the governors are doing is fueling serious corruption in this country. And the, lastly, the Senate. Where are the Senate reports on uh, auditor, uh, auditor, uh, uh, of the Auditor General 
by the Senate committees. <laughs> There's something amiss in all this fight. You know, we cannot export corruption how does, from how Nairobi. Does we talk about Senate in the absence of a Senate. This is a senator. We don't have a Senate. Oh, we oh, don't yeah. have a Senate. We oh, have uh, always known there was no Senate. Okay. Even if you read the Constitution, yeah. it is something that was forced there. But we were closing one eye and living with them. All right, I think we're going off rails. Let's just put through <laughs> to the subject. Continue, sir. So what, what, what I'm saying, the DPP could help us. Even the jailing that uh, Professor Manyara talks about. Of his students. <laughs> there, there, there are, of his students. But there are too many corruption cases which are just not prosecuted. In fact, the cases in court about prosecution, those ones which were there in the other government. Mm -hmm. the, 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 this new era of the DPP and this new anti-corruption, there's too many cases which are just getting by. Nothing is happening. So I, I think the DPP cannot be excluded from this in action of ESCC. It cannot be excluded. And, and Kenyans are watching. All right. But, but, but Jaco, you know, this dysfunctional uh, backpassing between DPP, ESCC, mm -hmm. CID mm -hmm. is, is a ping pong game. Yeah. I think it's really not personal. It is actually institutionalized failure. Exactly. When I become your president, I'll fix that. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> what, what should be the prime solution? Let, let's just, as we're getting to wind up on this as well. There's something the president said in one of those Tet House briefings. Well, if you forgive other things, he asked these fellows, why are you not doing your job? The police, why are you not doing your job? The DPP, why are you not doing your job? Yeah. The courts, why are you not jailing people? I wish they took the president seriously and actually moved to jail people because they don't want to jail people. It is the courts that are betting corruption in this country because they may argue that the prosecution and the investigations are so badly done but it is they who endlessly adjourn cases for years upon years. It is an administrative action from the chief justice that can bring sanity in the war against corruption. For example, if, if, we, if administratively they put a limit to how long it can take to do a prosecution, to, 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 to deal with a corruption case, mm -hmm. say within six months, the moment that file lands in the judiciary, it will be determined one way or the other. This will send a strong signal. And, 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 and the people doing the investigations and, 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 and the prosecution, I have been to court where the bench makes it known that the prosecutor is kind of hiding something. I've been to court. The, the judge can tell you, can interrogate you. If you follow the Hague proceedings, sorry, Korea, at the ICC, you could see how an interactive bench can corner the prosecution and direct the prosecution into doing the right thing. So all these institutions are not willing to fight corruption. We are left wondering whether it, whether it is because somebody somewhere at the top doesn't want that to happen. But since the president has challenged them, why can't they move and, and deal with corruption? Because if we save money on corruption, by our own admission, over 400 billion is, gone, is lost on corruption per year. Then doctors won't be on strike. <clears throat> All right. Let's hear from Bilo Kero. Yeah. yeah, I think this thing is, is really much more than that. It's not what we are talking about only. We've, if you've been around, you'll be talking about this thing. We've been talking about it for many years. Um, we have had radical surgery in the courts throughout all the judges. We have thrown out the entire ESCC before anti-corruption and put a new team. I mean, it's not a solution. The DPP's team is new. We, you know, they used to be under police. We put a new thing up. I, I think it's a societal problem. I think where we argue as a society that the end justifies the means. We glorify wealth, we glorify power, and therefore any attempt, anything that you do in order to get wealth is justified by the society and is glorified, uh, uh, then it becomes very difficult to blame the institutions because this thing goes, if, if today you are arrested or your brother is arrested, uh, you would be the first ones to go there to try and get him out because you think it. So I think it's a societal problem and I think it needs quite a bit of um, uh, work to be done. Um, to inculcate ethics in our workplaces, in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our workstations. And, it, and, and, and started from, from, because we've seen about our youth from university, the people are, what's happening in, in grades, what's happening in exams, what's happening. So it, it, it's really gone into the society. It, it's pervasive. So it, it's not just about the institutions. I think we have really tried to change institutions, but we are not, it's not going to be a solution. And that's why we have leaders 
to check these things. Mm -hmm. That's why we have, for example, it's society. It's not the about president with executive that powers. Pool. That's why we have the executive with, uh, with, with the powers to ensure that the right thing is done. You see, the executive, the president, to lead. Rid of 170 of his team, yes. more than another 170. <laughs> that's why, for example, the pool is the that's same. why, for example, the bomb <laughs> saying MPs fly to Kisumu, but the same MPs purport to have driven year in, year out. The kind of claims the MPs make. MPs attend sitting, uh, get sitting uh, uh, allowances, uh, attend uh, committees when they are in so Kuala Lumpur. So that Moses the Kura is in Kuala Lumpur, right, but he attended the committee for which he was paid. We must no, jail no, them. Okay. Okay. Let, let's say from uh, sequentially, then we'll come back to you, Moses Kure. Mm. From uh, Jacob Rio. Yes, uh, <laughs> briefly. You know, I want to agree with uh, Senator Bilo that it is a societal problem. Yeah, but there's something all these three gentlemen are not telling us, or telling Kenyans. It takes only one leader. It takes the leadership from the top. Forget mm. about these MPs. You know, really, these MPs, when, when uh, the other day when we were voting over these bad laws, uh, the rigging laws, the, these people were taken to state house by one leader. Some went to Karen and they, they were being given 100,000 shillings. And they come there ready to fight. They were killing each other over Christmas because they have been ordered. The same leader can order police to stop corruption, DPP to stop corruption, and ESCC to act. Go to Tanzania, Dibal. Mm -hmm. I've been to Arusha and Dar es Salaam recently. Because of this new leader mm -hmm. they have, Magufuli, the attitude of Tanzanians has changed. They, 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 they don't want, they are not, he is not accepting it. One leader. Look at what that Durtete is doing in the Philippines. Yeah, we, you know, and I want to send Moses Kure because I know the president is his friend and comes from his village. Tell him to get up and go to work. That is what Kenyans expect. And let me tell you, if he just showed us the attitude that he is a worker, this can, because it, this, this thing is the attitude. Corruption that we are, uh, that has permitted our society, is the, has become a culture. Somebody has to change it. Just don't talk about MPs, because MPs have grown, most Thank of these you. young MPs have grown in the era of right, corruption. Let's say from Moses Kuria. Yeah. You know, there's a story about some three guys who are given a ball. One was an American, one was a European, one was a, an African. Okay. So the American started kicking the ball, you know, in their prayer for people. The European formed a commission to decide what to do with the ball. <laughs> the the Afghanian uh -huh. uh, donated it to the king, because we love our kings. Uh -huh. So even when we have a constitution that removes power from the presidency to institution, you still say you want the president to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not our fault, it's just because we are... We are feudal by nature as Africans. We are just feudal. So even when we have got uh, anti-corruption, we have got parliament, being the true Africans, we take the ball to the president, to the king. It's, it belongs to you. And he, he said, but I thought the constitution removed this ball from me to institutions, to judiciary, to all these people. A guy who woke up on one day and fired a third of his cabinet, a third. In other countries, that would be a disaster. You say in the Philippines, Duterte or whoever you call him, a guy who is shooting people dead, oh, please give me that power. I would love it. I would love to shoot people dead if, if it's not for the rule of law. But I do respect the rule of law. Yeah? So you can't say that Duterte is doing it right. And you know, you know he sent a Christmas message to all the people and said, enjoy your Christmas. This is your last one. Maybe that's what is the place that you have done. <laughs> Duterte. <laughs> Those are exaggerations. So and by the way, just on, on my parting shot, uh, yeah, Val, yes. we need to move from uh, just uh, a bulky generalization uh, or singular view of corruption and, and actually debunk on what is corruption. Is it value for money? We need to have a value for money approach. When you don't supply this cup and you are given a tender, that is corruption. If you supply it at the wrong price, that is corruption. If the tender is given to Jacob Medu or not to Biro Kero, that is not corruption. As if, long as Kenyans get value for money. If it's not according to specification. If, that is corruption. That is but corruption. if it is, and the problem is now, what we are calling corruption is because the tender went to Jakoyo and not to Bilokero. Yeah. Check me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from uh, you. I think money is advice to my fellow Kenyans, especially those in leadership position. One, 
love your country a bit. Just a bit. Show some love for this country. This is the country your children will grow up in and the children of your children. Mm -hmm. Show some love for this country. Number two, let's have some system of values. Let's learn from successful countries like Singapore. What did Singapore do? It started with some core values. Mm -hmm. The leader said, we want to be self-reliant, for example. Okay? Yes. We want to get rid of corruption because we know what corruption does to us. And we want to be a first world country, not a dream like Vision 23rd. Mm -hmm. So let's show some love for this country. Above all, Moses Kuri, above all, let's learn to be serious with the things we do. Let's learn not to take citizens for, for granted. President Obama said this when he was here last. He said, when you drive around in those big vehicles, don't think Kenyans are stupid. Your people are not stupid. They know you've stolen this money. The question you must then ask yourself, Moses Korea, is how long this will last. The contradiction is so great. Such a contradiction is not sustainable. You cannot have a country where just a handful have everything going for themselves. And they, don't, they don't care whether people die in hospitals because doctors are on strike. They don't care whether lecturers are on strike. They don't care whether teachers are earning peanuts. So long as you stay in your Lovington home and Karen. Yes. And you have more money than you need. So long as your children can have designer ice cream. Thank you. You don't care. Please learn to care. All right. Learn to love your country. All right. Before also we, can, we get your parting shot, uh, Honorable Jacob Dio, uh, very briefly, we have a very also interesting story uh, in the standard. And uh, we want to know why. This is on page 11. Bill targets AG for removal from office. And it says a new bill uh, could see Attorney General Githum Wigai hounded out of office in an apparent spillover of state law office wars to parliament. This follows publication of a bill which accords Solicitor General J. Muturi the privilege of serving the pleasure of a president while curiously exposing the AG to a possible parliamentary onslaught. The Office of the Attorney General Amendment Bill 2017 targets the AG for possible removal from office through parliament. I know you have a, you have a special session today. Uh, what is this bill about? It's not special. It's not special. It's not special. It's not special. Uh, this is the last session, I should this say. The, yeah, yes, the uh, thank you. So what, 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 what is this? Bill all about? Quite frankly, I haven't seen it. You've not seen it? But, but I wouldn't be surprised. You, you wouldn't you know, be surprised. You know, the, that house is crumbling. Eh? So, you know, the, the, that, that is to be expected. All right. Uh, Bill Okero. Yeah, it's surprising. Um, I, I think um, the AG is the legal uh, advisor. <laughs> and um, it would be, uh, of course, the Solicitor General is the accounting officer, mm -hmm. really. Uh, I mean, the two institutions. Um, have, have distinct uh, roles. I, I think it would be, it, it be interesting if National Assembly were to, but uh, to consider, you know, uh, the AGs. Uh, I think it would really be upset. But uh, it's just a bill, and I don't, I don't think really National Assembly it would, would fly. want to. I, I don't think, I don't think it would because um, um, it's, it's it's an amendment to the constitution, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it it has to come through to uh, the, the amendment. House. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it. Um, I think. I think it's someone just trying to clip the wings of the AG, or probably give more powers to the uh, Solicitor General. Uh, but, but clearly, I don't. I don't think it. It, it really is in the spirit of the Constitution, which, which clearly gives AGs the powers uh, to be the legal advisor to government. Right. Thank you.